Welcome to Face the Truth, a program brought to you by the Church of Christ. Every day we are constantly exposed to an infinite number of images. And oftentimes we don't even realize just how many things we see from day to day. Now on the other hand, there are some images, especially of famous personalities or characters, who are easily identifiable to many. Let's take a look at some of these examples. Now the previous images are well known today, especially with the use of the modern media. However, there's an image that's been around for centuries that many people recognize all over the world. Can you identify this image? Now we went to the streets and showed similar renditions of this image, and here are some of the answers we received. Now I'm at a college campus and we're asking uh, different people if they can identify the following pictures. All right, Robert, who would you say this is? <laughs> Jesus. You, you Jesus. agree? That's Jesus, yes. This would be Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll show you another one. I can't see. It's an African Jesus Christ. And how about this? This is also a picture <laughs> of Jesus Christ. All right, last one. In tiles. How about this one? Oh, that would be Jesus. I would say Jesus. How did you come to know this picture identifies uh, Jesus Christ? From pictures I've seen in the past, like in church and stuff. How um, he's portrayed in society. That's not the picture that I grew up with in my house, though. What kind of picture did you grow up with? Um, we had a picture of Jesus with dreadlocks. So then, where do you think that these pictures came from? Throughout the ages. <laughs> do you know... Uh, if the Bible even uh, mentions what Christ looks like at all? Yeah, it does. It does? Where? I can't remember what, like, what verse, but it does. Do you believe that there's any mention in the Bible whatsoever as to how he actually looks like? No, there isn't. Let's say it does. We're not, I'm not agreeing that it does actually mention what he looks like. But let's say that it has some kind of uh, thing that mentions here. But still, it could be anything, right? Mm -hmm. So why would people, how would people get a picture just from um, what it says? What it says? Mm, that's a good question. I don't know. No one really knows what he looks like. No one really, truly, actually knows. But I think it takes great comfort in people to just have an image. You want to believe what you want to believe in, and it's up to the heart what it wants to believe in. Now, according to the people we asked, they identified these images as the image or picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you notice, though the men in the pictures varied in complexion, color of the eyes, and even race, they all identified the images as to being our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we even went a little further. We asked a few people to describe, well, how does Christ look like in their own words? And here is what they had to say. Growing up, you have a lot of different images of him. Well, actually, uh, since I was a little kid, the picture that I've, I've always seen is... Um, kind of like long wavy hair, not that wavy, but like blonde blue eyes, a white robe with a green stash, and bare, he's barefoot. Long hair and, you know, um, cute face, you know. But knowing that he's from the Middle East, he probably was not blonde and blue eyed. Like the previous interviews, they said that it is indeed to them the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if we consult the Bible, what is the true image of Christ? 
But we'll find out when we come back. Please stay tuned. Before the break, we learned that throughout history, there have been varied images as to what people believe that our Lord Jesus Christ actually looks like. But the general consensus today on the true image of Christ is that of what you now see on the screen. Now, according to the Holy Scriptures, what is the image of Christ? We're going to read from the book of Colossians chapter 1, and the verse is 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Now, according to what we have just read, what is the image of Christ? Well, Apostle Paul said that he, referring to Christ, is the image of the invisible God. Now, that seems to be a contradiction in terms. However, why did Apostle Paul say that Christ is the image of the invisible God, describing God as invisible, but saying also that Christ is the image of God. Is God, first of all, really invisible? Let's go to the book of John chapter 4 and the verses 24. The one speaking in this verse is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and he says this, God is is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth now what is our lord god according to christ christ said that god is spirit so the state of being of the true god is god is spirit now what does that mean what is a spirit let's get the explanation from the lord jesus christ again luke 24 39 Christ says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So our Lord Jesus Christ explains to us that a spirit does not have flesh and bones. And he also told us that God is spirit. So God has no flesh or bones. God has no material form, no physical form. Therefore, He is indeed invisible and cannot be seen. However, why does the Bible say that Christ is the image of God? In what sense is Christ the image of God? We will read now from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The verses are 21 and 24. This is written. If indeed you heard about him and were taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, and to put on the new man who has been created in God's image, in righteousness and holiness that comes from truth. So Apostle Paul made mention to us, that the image of God is not a physical image. Instead, it is righteousness and holiness. This is the true image of Christ, not a physical image. Instead, Christ truly possessed the quality of being righteous and holy. And this is what our Lord God also wants mankind to be as well. In fact, that is why in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and the verses 27, it is stated that man was created in the image of God. Now, sadly, it's only our Lord Jesus Christ who was able to measure up to God's image because he was the only man who was holy and without any sin. But how about the physical image of Christ? Because that's really the topic of our lesson today. Well, biblically, there are no verses describing in detail the physical appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ or any indication as to what He really looks like. How about in history? 
Could there be an actual image of Christ made in the past? Well, this is going to be very interesting. And we'll find out about that when we return after this break. Welcome back to Face the Truth. Now, earlier we learned that the Bible mentions the image of Christ, not a physical image, but this image is the image of God, which is righteousness and holiness. Now, the Bible does not give any definitive physical image of Christ. Yet today, there are endless portraits, pictures, and statues which can be found in many churches and also in many homes. Now, among these many portraits that have been made about the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the most popular, one that stands out, is this one made by the famous Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci. Now, is it possible that since this is one of the most famous and one of the oldest renditions of Christ or paintings, about Christ that this may be accurate? Well, we will show you what is written in a book entitled My Catholic Faith by Louis Laurevoir Moreau on page 233. It is said that the model the great artist Leonardo da Vinci used for the figure of Jesus Christ in his painting, The Last Supper, was a young man of exceptional beauty, whose countenance expressed innocence and purity in a remarkable degree. Some years after, when Leonardo da Vinci was ready to draw the figure of Judas, the traitorous apostle, he had a difficult time trying to find a model. So he went into the most disreputable haunts of the city to seek a suitable model. He saw all sorts of criminals, Immoral men altogether lost to all sense of decency, but still, he was not satisfied. At last one day he espied a wreck of a man, slinking in a corner of a low resort. His face had an expression so vicious and diabolical that the artist knew his search for a model for Judas was ended. Going near, he prevailed upon the fellow with the offer of a great sum of money to sit as a model. The series of sittings was about to end, when one day Leonardo da Vinci said, you know, since you came, I have always had a feeling that I have seen you somewhere before. I must be wrong, but the feeling persists. Thereupon the man in an outburst of despair cried, Yes, you have seen me before. I was the innocent young man who sat as a model for the figure of that Christ there. And now, see how I am sitting for Judas. For Judas. Now according to what you have heard from the book that was just read, Da Vinci used a model as an inspiration to paint the portrait of Christ. Take note, it was not Christ himself. That model used for Christ is the same model used to portray Judas Iscariot, the disciple who betrayed Christ as recorded in the Bible. Now, Leonardo da Vinci painted this portrait of Christ in the 16th century. He himself never saw the face of Christ. He painted this portrait as his idea of what Christ may have looked like. So isn't this the same as all the physical images of Christ that we now see today? They are all mere fictional works of various artists. In fact, historically, there are no known authentic physical descriptions or images of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know, some would ask, is there anything wrong with having these images to remind us of Christ? Well, we will answer that when we return. Welcome back. Before the break, we discussed the images portraying the Lord Jesus Christ are not really Christ himself. Instead, no one really knows exactly what 
Christ looks like, whether from the Bible or from historical documents. So the images that many people have today are just artistic renditions that come from the imaginations of the various artists, thus the many variations. Now some would say, well, it doesn't matter. I just want to have something to remind me of the Lord Jesus Christ. What could be wrong with that? Well, take a look at the following. Well, we've all heard about images of Jesus showing up in unlikely places. Now there is a man who found the image of his Savior in a bag of Cheetos, believe it or not. You know, those crunchy little snacks, cheesy, crunchy little snacks. Youth Minister Steve Craig says that he was about to pop one in his mouth when he noticed that it looked like Jesus. A Blue Springs woman says her child's crowns led her to an encounter with Jesus. I've been praying about certain things and I had asked God for a sign, you know, and I think the crazy part about this was within an hour of doing this, you know, I don't know what better sign you get than it actually being right in front of you. The upstate couple says they looked down and saw a message from above. Jacob Simmons and Gentry Lee Sutherland make no secret about being religious folks. God is real and he is watching. So when the engaged couple saw a face mysteriously appear on their Walmart receipt, there's only one person it could be. And the more you look at it, the more like Jesus. To some, it's just a tree with its bark exposed, discolored by running water. But to neighbors here in the 700 block along Bosque Loop in Bernalillo, it's a miracle. Yeah, like right in the middle of his body, you could actually see him looking at you. Many of the believers are Catholic and say this is a full body image of Jesus Christ, dressed in a robe and his arms crossed in front. Witnesses admit it may not look like much in the daylight, but at night it's different. Lorenzo Garul says his cousin was the first to see it. He looked into the tree, and in the tree you could see a glowing image of what we, we think is of our Lord. And um, so... My cousin called us, we all came. And this is what they saw on that first night, described as a glowing figure that appeared to look back at them wherever they stood. This is a picture taken by Joey Dominguez. It really does show, you see that silhouette. Now, handfuls of faithful Catholics continue to make their way to see for themselves. The image was discovered late Friday night, and since then it's become a makeshift place of worship. Neighbors here are the first to say to skeptics, you see what you want to see, but ask any of them, and they will tell you this has already done at least one good thing. When Tammy Kors had to have an MRI scan last week, she was nervous and uncomfortable, so she reached out to someone who always gives her comfort. As soon as they put me in there, I just started praying, and I just prayed, Lord, just be with me. She says what happened while she was having the MRI scan brought her to tears. I just had this wonderful experience that I was with him. What she sees is an image of Jesus Christ. You can clearly see his eyes, his, his eyebrow, his nose, his mouth. She calls it confirmation that she was not alone when she was at the hospital. You know, if these portraits of Christ were true, then look at what people have done. They would have degraded his image. And we are sure that Christ would not be happy with the way people portray him. Now, there is something even worse than this. What have millions of people done with the fictional image of Christ? Now, what we're about to present may seem offensive to some. But like we said before in our previous shows, uh, we are never out to offend anyone. It's never our intention. However, this show should be understood is a show to reveal the truth. Now, what have millions of people done with the fictional image of Christ? We're going to read from a book entitled The Faith of Our Fathers, written by James Cardinal Gibbons. We will read on pages 164 and also 165. It is in this sense, I take it, that scholastic writers have spoken of the same worship being paid to images of Christ as to Christ our Lord Himself. 
For the act which is called the worship of an image is really the worship of Christ himself through and in the presence of the image by occasion of it. Now, take note that there are millions of people who are not only convinced that the fictional images of Christ are true. Also, according to the book, Faith of Our Fathers, that we have just read, it stated that the same worship being paid to images of Christ as to Christ our Lord Himself. So, in other words, there are people, millions of people, that are worshiping an image that they believe to be our Lord Jesus Christ. They're worshiping these fictional images of Christ. What does our Lord God feel regarding any image that people make with the intent of worshiping it? This is what the Lord God mentioned in the book of Exodus. The chapter is 20, and the verses are 3 through 5. This is recorded. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. And so clearly, the Lord God does not allow man to make any physical image to be used for worship. It does not matter what or who, no exceptions. So for example, even if anyone may find an authentic picture of Christ, it is not to be worshipped in any way. Now if people really want to honor Christ, let us do it by doing our best to be like Him, by living a holy and righteous way of life in obedience to God's commandments. And so the truth may be painful at first, but whether we like it or not, whether we believe it or not, the truth is something we all must face. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brother Barry Thompson. Until next time, take care and God bless.